So if you're taking quarantine to the next level and not leaving your home even for groceries, you may be missing having really just quality food in your life. So that's why I'm here to show you that you can have decadent four course meal in your own home by finding all the ingredients that you need just around the surroundings of your residence. I've decided on five different things that we're going to make. First we have salad, cookies, a cake, granola bars, and wine. You might be asking yourself, where is he gonna get all the ingredients for that stuff? Who says the recipes aren't gonna work if you just use things that are basically almost the same as what they call for. So we'll start out with the salad. It says you need orzo. I don't know what orzo is, but I'm assuming it's a plant of some kind. They also call for chickpeas, which I'm sure I can find something that is just as good as chickpeas. Okay, so on the picture of the salad on the website, it had a picture of something that looked like kind of chunky. I'm guessing that that was the orzo. So here we have some orzo and it's pretty chunky so we'll just put that into the shopping bag amazing substitute for chickpeas delicious we have plenty here so we're not gonna be going hungry anytime soon so the recipe did not call for it but I like to have some greens in my salads so I'm a regular Gordon Ramsay over here. So we have successfully gathered almost all of the ingredients. So the first thing it says to do is boil the orzo. It's looking great already. Here we have the orzo and I'm just gonna boil it here for seven to eight minutes. Season the chickpeas. Toss them in a bowl with lemon juice, lemon zest, and salt. Okay. Okay, so it says lemon zest and lemon juice, but I just have this Clementine. So I think how you do zest is you just grate some of the side on this, so. Yes, it's working. Justin, are you okay? And so now we just need to kind of get some juice out. Okay, here we go. Oh my! <gasps> so here is the chickpeas and the lemon zest just sitting in there, getting nice and flavorful. Uh, Justin, this does not look right. <laughs> no. We can just add a dash of salt. There it is in all its glory. Just turn that off and move it off the burner, I think. So it looks like we need a red pepper, red onion, and some herbs. We've got our handy little shopping bag and we're gonna go forage in the wild. I found something that I can use for the pepper. It's basically kind of like a very thin piece um, and then you normally cut that up even more. I found something thin. I heard that like red and brown are on the same color scale. So this is basically a red pepper. <gasps> Wait. Oh, I thought I left the orzo on the burner. And this will be our cucumber. Looking absolutely delicious. Can't wait to feast. I feel like a farmer now. And here's this beautiful fresh onion. Yum. The salad is gonna be on the table, ready to eat at any moment. And she is so excited. <laughs> Don't mean to toot my own horn or anything, but as I was walking through the woods, I just realized that I am so resourceful and creative in finding ways to survive. So we're just supposed to chop this stuff up and dig in, I guess. If it were me versus a deserted island, I would be the one to survive. Things are starting to go awry. It said to cut up the cucumber, but this is very stiff. Okay, let's try it with um, onion. Okay, that's not working either, but we still have the various pieces of red pepper. So we are putting the orzo into the bowl. If you're hearing any noises of various machines, it's because our deck is crumbling to pieces and they're out there trying to salvage the last shreds of its existence before it turns completely into dust. We have the orzo and the uh, chickpeas in here so we can just add the rest of the ingredients to the salad. 
To be honest, I am frankly astounded at my own culinary expertise. We are going to make some amazing cookies. We don't have to sacrifice quality. Trust me, I'm experienced in this. We need one cup salted butter, one cup granulated sugar, one cup of brown sugar, two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, two large eggs, three cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, and the last ingredient, which is two cups of chocolate chips. Butter. Tastes good. We have our baking soda. I can tell this is gonna be a masterpiece and a half. All right, and then we can add the chocolate chips. I'll put them on a tray and they can bake. So here you can see I'm just mixing up the batter, getting it ready to cook. During the quarantine, everyone has been talking about their mental health. Personally, I've been doing pretty well. I haven't even gone even a little bit crazy at all. I'm just doing so great, not unhinged. I'm acting completely normal. Can't wait to eat these with my family. I'm sure they're going to be thrilled to see that I've made them such a treat. I was taking a cooking class before all of this started, and I'm sure that the teacher would be more than proud to see that all of her good teachings have not gone to waste in the slightest. Since I'm making cookies, I think that I might not make the cake. That might be a little bit too much for today. And also, you wanna stay healthy. Cake and cookies might be a little too much. So since we can't use the oven because there is a family of goblins living inside it, we're going to use the hot car to bake our delicious cookies. So I am a big proponent of innovation and I personally have not heard of apple wine or clementine wine. I'm gonna make it today for the very first time. These are very well prepared. I planned in advance for this video and I expertly aged the fruit. We are going to be doing the old tradition of stomping on the fruit to turn it into juice how they used to do in like what ancient Egypt or something so we have all of our aged fruit and I'm just gonna stomp on it until it turns into liquid just like in the olden days and it'll be so delicious I can't even wait to eat it or drink it I mean so yeah let's go So we have completely turned all of the fruit into liquid <laughs> and we're gonna put it in this jar. No, it's a vase. It's a vase. <laughs> no, it's not. It's called a vase. Why are you oh, this smells so good. We almost have all of the juice into the vase. Looks like someone spit it out and then spit it back out three times. Well, this is what happens <laughs> when the coronavirus hits. We have to improvise. So we put basically all of the wine back into the jar. There are some, a couple other ingredients that you need to make the wine. You need some uh, wine yeast and a couple other things I forget. But yeah, this is half the battle right here. We have all of the ingredients for the wine. This fungus instead of yeast, because yeast is a fungus and so is this, it should work the same way. So we'll just add all that in. Here we have granulated sugar. And then we just have to add some water. Just fill it up. So here is the finished product of the wine. The last thing we have to make is the lasagna, which earlier I said I was gonna make something else, but I changed my mind. So in lasagna, you need like layers of like meat and then the strips of noodles and stuff. Let's get a good amount healthy as can be. So we're finally here to make the last dish of the meal, which is gonna be lasagna. Yeah. A layer of pasta, and then you get your, your vegan meat. Another piece of the pasta. The last one. There you go. So I'm just gonna get the cookies out of the car and we'll have a feast. And they smell so good. Just look at these beauties. Can't wait to eat them. Yeah, they're definitely not made out of poop. I've never seen chocolate chip cookies look better than this. 
all of my dinner is done. We have the chocolate chip cookies, the wine, vegan lasagna, and this delicious salad. I'm just gonna go outside and have a little picnic and eat some of this delicious food.